Michael. Is that ready? Yes, it's recording. Okay. Michael's just discovered that we're how many locks we're attempting to. 13 locks. <laughs> he said, I'm just going to count the locks. This is 13. She's like, 13. And I'm like, no, not 13. And she's like, maybe 14. Oh my God. <laughs> um, yeah, we're on the River Nen. We are below Thrapston now, so it is the, like, the Nen. We're in Wellingborough at the Embankment Moorings. Yes. Along with about 50 million swans. And the, the poo of 50 million swans. <laughs> well, 40 million, because George got outside for a little while last night. Um, yeah, it's a nice place to moor in terms of accessibility, and there is an Elsin, and there are uh, sort of, you know, some facilities, although there isn't a waste point, unfortunately. There's a fabulous foods uh, little um, pop-up over there that... We didn't go to. We didn't go to, but if you want something greasy and burgery, <laughs> it seems like the place that people pick up. It's about a 20-minute walk into the town, which we did yesterday. Yeah. Went to the post office. Wellingborough is interesting because there's, there's... So many historic buildings. And they're in strange little places. Like, yeah. we, we were walking down this, um, just... I, I'm not even sure where we were. We were following a blue line on Google. And there was row after row after more modern buildings and everything. And then there's just this strange little oddity yeah. that's just sitting there. And it's like kind of Romanesque. <laughs> Probably made in the Victorian time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's some really interesting uh, places to see on some of the walks. There's, we, we went past the school, the grammar school that opened here in 1569. It was I remember. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, historic place. So the only uh, thing is, it was quite noisy last night with mm. the, like, there's the white noise, but then there was also some kind of beeping as well. So. Well, the flour mill is the white noise, and it turns out it is a flour mill, and there's just a constant sound of that thing running. And then, yeah, there was various trucks backing up type sounds, and uh, there were some alarms last night, and there's the compressor just over there, which is still quite noisy. Um, but I mean, it is very white noise. So yeah. as soon as we got into the boat and sort of shut everything up, it was like, oh, it's not so bad. But you so know, we tried to sleep. yeah, um, <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, yeah. But this morning, onwards, we're gonna try and make it to the, to the very outskirts of Northampton, um, because there really are no EA moorings once we leave here. Yeah, there are other options, and we could stop there. There's like the um, Friends of the River Neen moorings, and there's some private like pub moorings, I think. Yeah. Um, but just because of us. and there's some four four fee marinas. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. You know. But just because of our need to be in Northampton and do things before I leave to do the walk, we're gonna do a long push today. It's quite early. It's about eight thirty. Yeah. Probably not early for some of you, but it's early for us. And uh, we should get going. Yeah. All right, 13 walks. Yeah. George and I are off. George is on the hunt for more goose poop along the way. And um, we're going to meet Michael at the lock. Uh, so yeah, the path has taken us under the two bridges. And now we just have to find... <laughs> little slope. Now we just need to find the lock. Got to the lock, it's just there, and because I'm ahead and ready, it's already set for Michael, so just need to wait for the boat now. The sign says that either set of gates can be left open, so we can cruise straight out of the lock and continue on our way.
we've just paused below the lock because a, someone on a boat on a mooring shouted at us to tell us that he thinks that based on the level of water that the river's in flood in red and we shouldn't be boating. But we've got the alert set up and we didn't get an alert today. And also now we're trying to phone up and there's no message. Now Michael's on hold to try and find out for sure. Um, so hopefully we'll be told that there's no warning and we can carry on. But there is there is a current today and there is a flow on the river that we just want to make sure. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, we're not stuck. We're just, it is quite strong out here and we were wondering if there's any advice yeah, coming up. No, I understand. Okay, all right. No, I understand. Um, that's okay anyway. Any issues when you stuck? Thanks for calling okay? Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. Okay. No issues? No. I mean, there's no issues on their automatic dial system where they just leave a voicemail, which you can listen to voicemails. There's two voicemails currently available. They're both from September 29th. They're both the exact same message about the Great Ooze saying that there is no message. So, for some reason, there's two messages saying that there is no message. So let's anyway, carry it's on. exactly the sort of thing which could be completely automated and wouldn't require human beings at all. Cool. Let's go. Let's go. I need a, a windlass. You need a windlass. All right. There certainly is a lot of water heading downstream. No wonder the local boater thought the river may be in flood. It does seem pretty high and some of the fields seem to have flooded. There's officially seven feet of headroom on the knee. If the river was much higher we may not be able to fit through this bridge. At this end of the Neen, the locks are much closer together. It's less than a mile from the last lock to Earl's Barton lock. After leaving each lock, Michael tends to moor up to come and help me reset it. On the Neen, the guillotine locks need to be left empty with the guillotine gates in the raised position.
lowering the gate, Michael? You were waiting for me. You, you, you did. You saw. It. It was a conspiracy. You saw my thumb over the wrong button, and you were waiting, and you were waiting, and the light went off, and I pushed that button, and it dropped the lock, which meant that it had to reset. So then I had to raise it. So then I had to do the two-minute warning again. So we've had to wait four minutes instead of two minutes. And Joe is just like, I'm going to sit here and wait, and I'm going to videotape, and then I'm going to laugh at him for doing it, I'm make fun of him, and I'm going to put it on YouTube. Things I put up with. Seriously. Seriously. You're the one that pressed the wrong button. You saw me. I didn't know. I, I had full trust that you know the difference between raise and lower. You'd even told me it's too high. I can't reach the top button. It's It takes too much energy to lift my head and <laughs> yeah, my hand above my arm. These boxes are really high, so instead of just having your arm out, you have to have your arm up. It's tiring. Yeah, so when I was like, it doesn't seem that high. Georgie's a good boy. Georgie, he's a good boy. So, yeah, that was White Mills Lock there. And it's outside White Mills Marina, which is there. Five locks done. I was wrong, it's only 10 I think we're doing today. So, five done, five to go. And in other news, it's got really windy. As you can see, I'm really happy that the rain has started. <sighs> Just got to the next lock and it stopped raining, thank goodness. And we're just a couple of miles from the outskirts of Northampton now. Um, yeah, so this lock's got a bit of a mobile home site next to it as well. And then on the other side, uh, build a sheep. Uh, I'm just lowering the gate and Michael is poised to start raising the paddles on the other end. I'll set the lock this time. We don't want to risk another two minute delay. That is the face of a dog who wants to get off the boat and chase a ball.
But I take a turn bringing the boat out of the lock here. And remember I said it had gotten windy? Well, I can't get over to the lock landing as the wind keeps pushing me across the river. I make Michael meet me at the portage point and then he makes backing up to the lock landing look easy. I think the wind must have died down or something. Once the lock has been reset, we get on our way. We're just outside Northampton now, and there's a fairly sharp turn onto this cut by the Northampton Boat Club. It'll take us to Western Farville Lock. the last lock of the day, assuming there's a free roaring just on the other side of the lock. I'm in my usual position, standing, pushing a button. While we're waiting for the lock to fill, I walk up to the bridge to see if there's room on the moorings around the corner. The sign on the floodgates state that the moorings on the washlands are available between the 1st of May to the 30th of September and outside of these dates the moorings are for emergency use only. Since the date of filming is the 5th of October we decide we'd better continue on to Northampton. Back onto the river and those are the washland visitor moorings. We're heading upstream so are quite surprised to find such a wide section of river here, but I guess if this area is used to store flood water, it makes sense. Here we turn onto another cut. If we had continued straight, we would have reached quite a large weir. There are some visitor moorings outside this pub, but I presume you'd need to be a customer of the pub to use them, so we carry on. And this is the second lock down this cut. According to the sign on the lock, we don't need to reset it, so we can continue straight on. We're pretty much in Northampton now and honestly feeling a little emotional. Because we've come so far today, we only have one more cruise to do before we finish the whole trip. back out of the cut and onto the main river once more. The white boat is called the Ark and it's permanently moored there and used as a cafe.
These are supposed to be 48 hour visitor moorings, but I'm guessing that some of those boats may have been there a little longer than that. We are at our final lock on the River Neen. We've done 37 since leaving Peterborough. It seems a lot to you remember that there are 17 locks ahead of us on the Northampton flight alone. for the overexposure. Yeah, they yeah, blown out. Sun back there. But hey, it means we don't have to wear sunglasses while facing you. <laughs> I'm just too tired to move. That was quite the day and not how we planned it and... Not where we planned to end up. And not the mood we planned to end up in. <laughs> yeah. So this is Northampton. And, this uh, is Northampton Embankment. Yeah, Northampton Embankment about three and a half, four miles further than we expected to go today. Two hours longer, three locks further. Although I did say 13 locks, I actually meant 10 this morning, but then we ended up doing 13. 13 yeah. Because the mooring, I've probably said in the commentary, but the mooring that we were gonna stop at below the lock was on a tidal bit between two tidal barrages. Yeah. And it said to only moor there in emergencies. Yeah, so except for from May 1st to September 30th. Yeah, so we're just outside that rough a week after that now. So there was room and there were two boats there that clearly weren't having an emergency and we could have stopped there, but then it just seemed a bit silly and naughty, so. Well, because you really don't want to be stuck between the barrages when the river rises. And we did have a section we were on today, which was quite high, like yeah. not completely in flood, but high enough that water had gone over the embankment and flooded a little bit of a cow field and made a small And there was a lake. bit of a flow on there, so. Yeah, so. So there was definitely a sense that water has been high, and rain also, has been falling. Also, the Neen floods every year, and it's getting towards that time when it's going to happen. So. Yeah, so best to be off at least the, the main part of the river in the barrage section. So now that we've passed through Northampton Lock, we're we're above that section. We are yeah. no longer on the River Nen. But there were two more mooring options that we thought we might do before here. The first one was a pub. We didn't realise it was a pub, and we didn't want to stop there. And the second one is actually an EA mooring. 48 hour mooring and the boats on there have been there for longer than 48 hours. <laughs> Very different. So yeah, one way or another we made it. Uh, we've also put a call in with Northampton Marina, which happens to be sort of immediately beside us um, in regards to whether or not there might be somewhere to moor up during the time that Joe's gone. Uh, otherwise, I might end up shuffling back and forth. Well, I don't want you to do that. There's no way you could just shuffle too. Well, We'll see. Otherwise, I'm going to have to call and uh, try not to get the uh, fixed penalty fixed anyway. penalty of 100 pounds for doing any of the things that they told me I'm not allowed to do on the sign up there. Um, I mean, we, we could go forward and just get a CRT mooring. That's the other option. That's true. Yes. Anyway, we are tired. We are tired. <laughs> and at that last lock, after doing the, pretty much the whole of the name and dealing with the hectic locks. I opened the paddle too quickly before Michael was tied on in the way he wanted to be. I noticed that Michael had tried to change the rope and he didn't get it on like as quickly as he wanted to. I so didn't I, get it on at all. I was trying to be polite about you failing to get it on. <laughs> so I dropped the paddle really as quick as I could and I just got it dropped as just as Michael got a rope around to stop the boat which was accelerating forward so it was fine. But yeah. Well it, w it wouldn't have been fine if I hadn't gotten it on that bullet. But it's just shows, one hell of a it just shows. It just shows that even after a thousand locks, <laughs> when you're tired at the end of a long day, you things can, can go it. wrong. Yeah. yeah. But we came within probably about a foot of hitting the front gate at speed before the rope stopped it. So, yeah. <laughs> Any landing you can walk away from. Any mooring you don't have to swim away from. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm glad we're here. But. Me too. 
We were in Northampton a day earlier than we thought we would Two be. Two days. Two days earlier than we thought we would be. No, a day. A day earlier than we thought we would be. <laughs> we're not allowed to run engines and generators between 9 p.m. and 7 a.m. We're not to be a noise nuisance at any time. We cannot operate a business. We, we cannot not... store, hang, or place anything that might cause a disturbance or obstruction, and that's the one that's got me. We... What do you want to what do you want to hang? Well, I'm like, there's pictures of George on the side of the thing. Is that is that store? And then no sewage, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> George is just sat over there by the railings. Oh, it's raining. Let's go. <laughs> just as we were mooring up, this woman I, I scared and herself. She scared herself. Yeah, she was talking on her phone, and she just didn't see George. She nearly tripped over, and Anyone? she got quite a start. Although George was fine. George is like, well, what's he right. So What's your problem? that's the weather kicking in. So thanks for watching. That's Give really us a good thumbs timing. up. Comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Subscribe to Minimal West Maximal Velocity if you want our time lapse videos. Click that bell if you want to get notifications. And here's hoping the river doesn't flood from this rain specifically. Mm -hmm.